Hey everyone, Jason here from STS. Today I'm going to be introducing a new piece of hardware to this channel. Um, anytime I either purchase or receive a piece of equipment that's going to help me improve the quality of these videos, I plan on making it a point to do uh, somewhat of a video introduction as I bring it into the channel because it will become, hopefully become, somewhat of a, a permanent part of the show. Uh, so I had originally planned on doing this with Arduino. I'd spent some time writing some code you know, converting the analog reading from the pins over to a digital reading that I had planned on relaying via serial communication to a computer and then writing an application that would actually translate that into an old style analog meter or into a digital display. And then another thought that I had was, well, why not take old analog gauges and mount them in a box and point a camera at them and then do it the old analog way anyway and really give it that old analog feel. Uh, so I had all these ideas as to how I was going to do it, but I'd spent more time on uh, on the, the coding side. You know, I'd spent quite a bit of time on the Arduino side of it, but I never really put it into action because I'm just completely buried. And one thing leads to the next, and another days went by, and other days went by, and I still haven't gotten anything together. Well, big surprise. Yesterday in my mailbox, I received a weird package. It's got a little gift thing on it that says uh, gift enclosed. I thought, well, heck, wonder what somebody sent. So whenever we ran our check-ins and unboxed everything, I hear Angie go, oh, honey, you're going to love it. And uh, sure enough, um, this very, very nice gentleman sent me this multimeter. Now, as soon as I seen it, I thought, that looks like a glimpse of the one I seen on the Rossman show. Because I, I seen something in my suggested feeds that gave me a clue that um, Lewis was working on on-screen display. And I flipped over there and, and I watched, you know, I I, I'll be honest, I haven't had time to watch a Lewis video in a really, really long time. Uh, so, I actually seen the beginning where he was showing the meter before he did anything with it, and then I kind of skipped all the way to the end where he had the meter on the screen and, and you could see it working. I thought, well, that that's pretty cool. That looks like, a, you know, I also heard him say the price, and I thought, well, that looks like a pretty ex inexpensive bet to getting this going. Uh, but I still, you know, I would have kicked that around for months before I ordered something like this. Heck, my Radio Shack meter is still working great. Everything's great there. I just I don't have the on-screen display. And here, this thing shows up in my mail. So before I go getting too sidetracked here, um, I want to say thanks to this guy. John Barron, man, this is, this is really awesome. This is, this is going to help me out a lot. And I'm actually going to sit here in front of the camera right now and hook this thing up and set this up and bring this up to a point where I've got, hopefully bring it up to a point where I've got... Um, the display or the data from this thing on the screen where I can relay that into my recording software and that way everybody can see my see my readings it's gonna be really really awesome so let's see what kind of trouble we can get into now I will admit that before I started this video I thought well if it is gonna work for the channel and Rossman has one then it would be on his channel today so I jumped into the most recent video and skipped forward until I seen BAM multimeter on the screen and I do have to say, I don't think I would have thought of right off the bat making it transparent like that. Uh, that is an idea that I'm going to be stealing directly from you. And I can't help it. That, that's, that's awesome. I'm, I'm going to do that. And to be honest, I did not realize that um, Open Broadcaster would do that green screen thing. Because I think how you did that is you took probably the software that came with it or some other third-party application that's turning the data into the numbers. And then from there... I believe in Open Broadcaster, you can set it up to uh, do a green screen against the background. Uh, but I'm not 100% sure. We'll see what we're getting into. I'm planning on doing that right now with this piece of equipment. And I'm planning on um, getting this on the channel. This should be here from now on. So let's get started. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and open this thing up and see what we've got in the box. First thing we see, yeah, this actually came yesterday, and I had to put off the urge all evening long working with this Radio Shack meter to open this thing up and, and use it. But anytime I add a piece of equipment that's going to be substantial to the channel, um, I would like to do it with the channel and show everybody it while, I mean, show while I'm hooking it up. All right, let's see what we got and see what my first thoughts are on this thing. Um... It seems really big because, first of all, here's what I'm coming from. Now, keep in mind, this is going to be a tough breakup, guys. This is going to be just awful to go through. This multimeter that I'm upgrading, I mean, here you go. I've never showed it up close in person, but all these videos you see of me fixing this, <laughs> fixing these phones, this is on a Radio Shack multimeter. Model number, I guess that's the model number, 22163. I got this as a Christmas present back before I was old enough to drive, like way before. 
And this th this has been my multimeter. I mean, I have had a lot of other multimeters, but this thing's outlived them all. I I have killed a lot of multimeters, and this one just this one never dies. Okay, so another thing that does concern me. That's a weird thing. It's got some, like, it's like there's a light in the middle of it. But I don't see a way of hooking this to a computer. Let's see what I'm, I might be missing here. Because on the box it says digital multimeter. Hmm. Maybe maybe that's not the same one so let's go ahead and see what else we got here let's pull out let's pull out all the cables we got our probes and we got a temperature that's going to be a temperature probe ah yeah and we got this weird thing that weird thing with the light this is made to plug into that and goes to here so this is going to be like some sort this is going to be some sort of um, infrared serial communications serial over infrared gosh how long has it been since anybody has used serial communication over infrared oh my gosh packard bell ah packard bell i i, I get all the way back to the packard bell days with the big bulky speakers on the side of the monitor that's m one of my first memories of the serial communication over infrared so i think between here and here serial communication is probably not going to be much of an issue like, because we got plenty of line of sight, right? Alright, so in order for any of this thing to work, this thing is going to need a battery in it. I see that it does have, it also came with a battery. So we've got all that. It looks like it came with some software. Now, regretfully, I am going to be setting this up on Windows 10. Not my choice of operating systems to do this type of thing on. I'd much rather it be Windows 7 or uh, some flavor of Debian. Okay, so we have an instruction manual, but you know we're not going to be using that. So let's kick that aside. All right, so here we go. We've got everything in front of us. Got our new probes. Hey, maybe I won't have to order. I was getting ready to order new probes as well because mine are getting really beat up and bent. And that is the wrong screwdriver to do that with. All right, and let's see. Boy, that's a really tight fit there on the battery compartment. There we go. And we're gonna grab our, our nine volt battery. Best tool in the bunch to open the nine volt. Long screw scalpel. There we go. Now, since I have two multimeters, one of them ready to go, one of them waiting a battery sitting in front of me. Uh, the best way to test and make sure that your 9 volts are good to go, as always, the way I test every single 9 volt is I take it and I stick it to my tongue. That one is not very good. Hang on. Hang on. Ah, maybe it's just because I'm doing a video. That's pretty good. We're going to call that one full charged. So we're going to slip that down into the little compartment here. Actually, I've I don't think I have ever used a multimeter on a 9 volt battery except for the time whenever I was a kid and I made a belt of them and I like I hooked them you know in series opposing end to end to end to end and I went all the way around this belt and I came up to something like uh, oh my gosh how many volts was it somewhere between like 40 and 80 I, I don't remember I know it was gnarly though when you would short it and you know what I had to do to check and see how many volts it was here's my two wires that's probably the worst shock I've ever received in my life. Never again will I stick that many volts DC in my mouth. That that was dumb. Okay, back to this little uh, unboxing here. I'm not going to call this a review because I'm probably not going to be very good at reviewing. I don't know uh, enough about various different types of multimeters to be even, even able to give you a good representation of anything. Because, I mean, seriously, I'm going from this 
to this. I don't need it to be extremely accurate. I just need it to give me give me readings. I mean, I can do the same exact thing. I'm surprised I don't have a line of them here. I got a box full of them. I can do the same thing with old, really old needle gauges, and I just need to know where the electricity's going. That's all. I don't you know, I don't need the exact readings until things get really hairy. All right, so let's screw that back down with the wrong screwdriver. I should use a way bigger screwdriver, but this one just barely grips it. And it's a good quality screwdriver, so it's not tearing it up. Okay, so it looks like we have a kickstand here. And let's see if this thing comes on. Yay, I haven't had a new multimeter in so long. It's been a long, long time. Select, what's this little gear looking thing up here? hold button but what if we hold it that's a light it's not a gear looking thing that's that's a light to turn a light on and rel slash rs232 auto ranging you know what there is not much in the way of specs here on this thing I'm gonna type the model number in and see what all this thing will do I know it's probably right behind me in the instruction manual but that's on paper. Okay. This model number is TP nine six zero five B. BT. I wonder if it's Bluetooth. Most things with model numbers that end in BT or Bluetooth. Oh, here's one on Amazon, conveniently. TP9605BT Smart Multimeter with Bluetooth and USB connection. Cool. Oh, we don't need microscope on this video. We're not running microscope. So yeah, it says it has Bluetooth. Maybe we'll pull out the instructions after all. Wired USB available, full function, 600 couch, or mass multimeter, iOS and Android. So I bet you that Bluetooth mode is probably only going to work with Android app, uh, unless I can pair this up with the computer and get it to work as a, a serial connection, you know? Well, is it going to work with a serial over Bluetooth? That's what I'm trying to say. So, what do we got on our disk? I'm not going to go into too much here. Like I said, this is not going to be a review on this multimeter. Like, I'm pretty well positive I can put it on alternating current or DC and measure voltage. It's most likely going to work. Uh, let's go ahead and put our probes on it, because we are, we are going to need probes. I'm not getting anything done without probes. And let's see what we got here. Those are pretty sharp, but I am actually going to use my other probes. I will put these aside for a rainy day. So let's get our probes on it. We're going to plug the, the um, red into black and the black into red. Let's see, what do we got here? Voltage, current, we're going to plug in here. And go ahead and touch our leads together, and we should get zero ohms. We get 0 0.5 ohms and falling, so it's already more accurate than mine. My other meter, I don't think it's got a way to calibrate it either. My Radio Shack meter would see this as like 1.2 ohms. So that's actually not too bad. There might be a way to calibrate this thing, but I'm really not sure. And to be completely honest, I'm not concerned about 0.5 or 0.8 or, or even 1 ohm because you get a feel for it. You short them together and you see that that's 1 ohm. And you know when you see this meter reading 1 ohm that that's freaking zero. So um, Bluetooth, I'm not sure. Maybe I will look at those instructions. Because it would be kind of cool to not have to hook a wire to this thing. 
let's see. So, use extreme care when measuring voltage above 50 volts. Unless you're wet. <laughs> then you better start taking care of around 30 volts. Alright, range control, low battery. It tells me what all the things on the screen are. Electrical specifications. Where's the I'm a nerd page and want to put this on the screen for my YouTube channel? Where, where's that page? Let's see, function button select. Oh, I'm going to have to read this whole book because there's no pictures. Seriously? Alright, it's telling me how to measure resistance. Okay, range. Uh, REL RS232, relative measurement. Okay, so the REL RS232 button. It says um, relative measurement. RS-232 enable and Bluetooth activation. Press this button once, the meter enters relative measuring mode and it shows the little triangle signal appear on the LCD. The result of the relative measurement is the difference between measuring value and a referenced value. The reference value is produced same as momentary reading value when pressing this button. Press it again to access this mode and the little triangle symbol disappears from the display and this button does not work on frequency diode and continuity test function I am horrible at reading aloud online I'll try again later press it again to enter RS-232 communication mode this button will enable or disable the RS-232 mode press it for more than two seconds the RS-232 communication will start press it more than two seconds again to cancel RS-232 communication Well, when you enable RS-232 communication, is that also what starts Bluetooth? Is it? Let's try it. I am on a machine that has Bluetooth. And also, where's this disk? Here's, here's the disk that came with it. Not much to see there. I'm going to plug it into this machine that is most likely, and intentionally, just out of view of that camera that I'm leaning toward. Let me make sure it's recording. Okay, so we've put the disc in. And I am going to switch you over to my other screen, which nobody ever gets to see. But I have sufficiently reduced resolution and made it so that everybody can see that screen. And we're going to see what came on this CD. And hopefully I don't reveal anything other than the discs on my full file server here which just about took a dive on me during the last lightning storm. All right, so here's our, our disk. There we go. You know what? That is just, okay. That's uncomfortable for me, but it'll be good for you. So we've got data logger, CH341SCR. We've got a Bluetooth manual. Okay, guys, this is just absolutely miserably awkward. So I'm actually going to put you back over here on this screen and I'm gonna move this box over here we're gonna do this demonstration over here so that I don't have to look to my right so let's see what's on this Bluetooth manual TP9605 manual we got all kinds of books on here word data logger which one's it gonna be is it going to be this CH341 SER? You know what, these manuals, it takes forever to read a manual. Let's just do this the way I always do it. Let's, let's run data logger. Let's see what this is. Got a sneaky feeling it's going to be data logger. How to install your app on a cell phone. Uh, no. Let's, let's just not. Okay, and here's the installation I got going here for data logger. It's automatically going to install D drive. Okay. Install it directly to the disk that it's running from is what I think it's trying to do. All right, so let's install this here. What is CH341 ESR? Let's run it.
All right, so there is CH341SER. That's going to be some sort of a driver. Okay, and here is our data logger. That, that sucker is finished installing. So I click Finish. Now this, though, device driver install uninstall. Pick an IMF file. USB. Okay, this is going to be the device driver for this little cable. That's what that's going to be. But we're going to try to not use this cable. So let's set that cable right here. And let's see what happens on our other monitor here. We're going to go over here and attempt uh, as soon as I figure out what I'm doing. Let's see, I created a scene called internal. That is my other monitor. Okay, we have data logger here, which that appears to be the only other application here other than the driver for the little infrared communication USB cable thing here. So on my laptop screen, we're going to look for, and yeah, I am doing this on a laptop. I, like everything that you see on this YouTube channel, it's all been recorded with a laptop um, that was in the throwaway pile, and I actually fixed it by refloating the GPU. And I've been using it ever since, which is nuts. I've been expecting it to die any day, and every day it just keeps on going. So what do we got here? Here's my Bluetooth devices. I've got, geez, what is this stuff? Anyway, TP96. TP, look, it's already there, ready to pair. Oh, that's cool. All right. What is it going to see it as? Is it going to see it as like um, a headset? You can find the passcode and the info that came with it. Man, I already threw all that info away. Right, here we go. Let's do Bluetooth pairing. We're going to do looking at my screen capture to use the machine uh, TP9605 we're gonna try one two three four five six it says connecting passcode isn't right we're gonna try zero 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 and yay I think we hacked it And it looks like this thing might actually connect. TP9605. Connected. Yay. Now, what all can you do? It shows pictures of things. COM ports. We have um, COM7 and COM8 for headphones. Like, seriously? Um, can we add anything? I, I have, I'm a total, complete total noob here. I have no idea what I'm doing. But I know I'm going to need some sort of a communication with this meter if I plan on communicating it with software that it came with. So incoming, outgoing, VPC. Hmm. Outgoing. So that would be like a port on my PC that I want to give access to from my device, right? Or incoming where it's going to be a port on the device and I want to be able to access that from my computer. This might be the total complete wrong thing to do. And it set it up from headphones again that I don't even have. Like Those are old junk headphones, like the power button died the first week that I used them. Alright, hardware. Bunch of Bluetooth stuff. All right, so I know that we have that's the same thing I was saying. I know that we have this thing connected, but I don't see any sort of device that I'm going to be able to use. So I don't know. Let let's have a look at data logger. That is the only other application here, and this is exactly what I seen on Rossman's screen. So we're going to go and find some config here we got com set and once again that that just that royally sucks to do over there on that screen so we're gonna do this here we're gonna look for command record 
com set configure. Nice. I, for one, appreciate that. That looks like really, really good stuff to have. Um, so let's do com set. Com port will let me choose nothing because I actually. Anything incriminating on that? No, we'll just leave that. I actually probably don't have a single COM port on this machine. Ah, Windows 10 is such a pig. And it could also be all the video and screen, the uh, screen capture going on here on this laptop too. All right, so yeah, we don't even have any ports listed here. Uh, I don't have there's no COM ports on this machine so we don't even have a, cat have a category for it so let's go back over here to Bluetooth and see if there is any way to hook this up seriously let's see if there's any way to hook this up via uh, Bluetooth and then I'm gonna move on and maybe come back to that later and get rid of the wire later because I don't want to spend a whole bunch of time on this so if I do add a COM port this PC is using COM to determine whether you need a COM port, read the documentation that came with your Bluetooth device. I think we need a COM port. Uh, so if we do outgoing, so there is nothing here that offers up that sort of communication. I just might not be able to do that. Let's get rid of this HM700. Let's get rid of this VIV headphone because none of this crap is used anymore. And then let's see what happens if we try to add a port. Yeah, that's just, it's not going to support it that way. So um, let's scratch that. Let's go ahead and use a cable. Um, and to use a cable, we're going to go back to the device installation that I think I already closed. Surely there's got to be a way to hook that thing up with Bluetooth, right? So the CH, CH341R, this was a device driver for this USB thing. There you go, so there's the driver for it. And I'm going to be connecting, come on, switch. And I'm going to be connecting this cable. And I believe I've got a USB extension behind one of these baskets here that we're going to use. We do. Oh, you know what? I should have installed the driver first, but I didn't. And because I didn't, this thing's going to attempt to search automatically. Uh, I missed it. I looked away and I missed it. Did it finish installing? I'm not sure. Alright, back into device manager. Hey, there we go. We got common LPT. So now we have a USB serial port that's set up on COM5. Okay, so we're not going to do that driver install. It appears my Windows 10 found it all by itself. We're going to go ahead and rerun data logger here. So here's our meter. Yeah, I would have never set this. I would, I would have never bought this for myself. I am so thankful that this guy did this because it would have taken me forever. I mean, for absolute ever 
to get that incorporated into the channel because I plan on doing it with Arduino when I had time to finish building what I needed to build. So let's line our little optical, our little infrared transmitter receiver configuration here up with one another. Checking our little nubs. I think I'm putting that in right. Yeah. Goes in. We should feel a little click when it goes past the nubs, right? Everything about this meter has fit really tight so far. There we go. And then we'll... Jeez, that is never coming loose on accident. There we go. And then it made its turn and it's, it's locked in. I don't know if it turned far enough, but that's all the farther I'm going to turn it. Okay, so we have our serial communication thing hooked up. And what COM port did I say that was on? I already forgot. But it should be a new one on the list, right? So let's switch you back over to screen capture. go and I'm gonna fix this so that you can see the on-screen display and the meter at the same time that'll work Oops. I keep clicking on my screen capture like and trying to figure out why it don't work all right get this basket out of the way we do not want this here And let's see if we can get this thing to connect. So, up here we're going to go back to ComSet, and we're going to drop this down, and yay, we've got a COM port on here now. It's at COM5. Um, what is the baud rate of this meter going to be? Is it going to be 38.4? Uh, let's just leave it at default. Man, 2400 baud. There's a blast from the past. Off. Uh, All right, so this thing is set up on COM5. And the direction said to hold the RS-232 button, right? And it says RS-232 on the screen now. It came up there. Com set. I just need to tell it to go, right? Tell it to record. Nope, that didn't do it. Hmm. Enable disable correction. Mm hmm. Still not getting anything. Okay, so let's close data logger. We'll leave this meter set to say RS-232. We're going to open data logger back up. Check COM set and see if we're still on COM5. We are. Um, record. Stop record. Let's try 38400 on the baud rate. Surely it's here, right? No, 14.4 is our max baud rate. It's kind of scary. Well, let's try 14.4. Let's say record. And I get nothing. Absolutely nothing. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. So this is stop and this is record. Whoops, what I push? Oh, that's some kind of a weird funky mode that threw it over to the other monitor like that. Uh, we don't need all that. What was that? It's, okay, so these are different toggles. That one always throws it to the other screen. And Interesting. Let's try 9600 baud. So we'll do COM5, 9600 baud, 8N1. Ah, there we go. Now we're getting something. And we would appear to be getting it without clicking record. That's pretty handy. 
Um, let's switch over to ohms. Yeah, heck yeah, this is working. There we go, and there's our, our 0.5. Sweet. Yeah, nobody's going to believe that I didn't see Rossman's channel and run out and buy this, but I promise you, I plan on doing this with Arduino, but this nice gentleman, John Barron, awesome dude, um, this is really cool. Thanks, man. This is going to be really cool for me. So from here, we have this on the screen, and what I'm going to be doing to make this to where it doesn't bother me because I need this on my screen all the time for video I'm gonna turn the analog portion of this off and I'm gonna move this over to to my other screen over here so when I'm recording a video I'm always going to put this meter like up here at the top right hand corner of this screen and then what I'm gonna do here on my open broadcaster I might be able to get that in view of that camera um, on my open broadcaster, I'm going to add a global source. Um, so we're going to go into our global sources, and I'm going to add a window capture. We're going to call it multimeter. And we're going to say inner window of data logger and we're gonna say uh, subregion and select okay and do I select it on open broadcaster or do I select it on the monitor I'm not sure probably do some fine-tuning on this Press enter, escape, or click outside this rectangle when complete. So maybe I do it over here on open broadcaster screen. Maybe I do it right here, right? No? No clue. Hmm. Okay, let's change this to entire window, do subregion, select. When selecting a region, move by clicking and dragging or resize the rectangle by clicking. Oh, duh. Okay, so we're going to grab the edges of this rectangle. See, this shows just how much of a noob I am. And we're going to get right down and we're going to click the edges of this multimeter because we don't want everything in the... Let's try this again. We don't want everything in this display. We just want the digits. Yeah, for the two or three of you that don't, that don't know about the Lewis Rossman channel and the iPad Rehab Jessa Jones channel, I strongly encourage you to have a look at what they're doing. There's some really good people, and um, I really owe a lot to them. A lot, uh, you know, a large, a large part of why I'm in the position that I'm in now is due to the um, the enthusiasm that those do have in, inflicted on me. They've really, they've really changed my life, and I will, um, I will always give credit to them for something or another. I mean, come on. Um, so here we go. I've got this area of the screen selected. Let's just, uh, am I really going to drag it in farther? Like, I don't know how far my digits are going to go out, and I want to make sure I got the little M here on ohm, like mega ohm. I might change it later on to where I get auto or whatever else might wind up needing to be here. Um, but there we go. I've got, I've, I've got a source set up to where that can be on my screen, and I've called it on Open Broadcaster. Um, I've called it multimeter here it is and I guess I could have I could have done that on the screen had I drug it over there but I didn't realize it because I'm a complete YouTube noob so anyways that is all set up as long as I put my multimeter at the top right hand corner of the screen that you're looking at what that's gonna do for me 
is inside of Open Broadcaster whenever I add this as a source. So let's say we are on screen capture here and we're looking at, uh, let's say we're looking at a schematic, you know, just hypothetically speaking. Um, let's say we're looking at a schematic on screen capture. I am going to add that global source now to my Open Broadcaster multimeter. There we go. And there is my multimeter. We've got 0L in the top left corner. And I'll probably wind up trimming that down much, much more closely. Because that is big, ugly, and gaudy. Now, here's the part that I'm going to absolutely steal from somebody. Because I did not realize this was possible until I got online and I looked and seen what uh, I thought... Now, if this is going to work, and it's going to work good, then Rossman will still be using his today. And I went and looked at the most recent stream, and sure enough, bam, there it is. So, I thought, how in the hell did he get transparency on a proprietary application, or third-party application? And I thought, it must be Open Broadcaster. Open Broadcaster must support the ability to green screen this. So, we're going to go in, and we can move this around the screen. Okay, so we've got, getting confused here as to what window's which. We can move this around the screen. We want to make this transparent. So if I go in here, do I have to change it on, I know I'm going to modify the source. Uh, so let's go in and look at our global sources here. And we're going to look at uh, multimeter, our multimeter source. And let's go ahead and move our... We can't move the multimeter off the screen because I've got boxes open. So let's close our boxes. Let's move the multimeter off of our screen because it's it's annoying. Okay, we'll just move that aside. And we're going to go in and edit our global sources. So here is our multimeter as the global source. And we want to use this color key because what we want to do is tell it that anything that's that, that's that ugly like puke peach color we want to tell it to get rid of it we just it, it, we need it to be gone so we're gonna say use color key and we're gonna choose select and I'm gonna jog over here and I'm gonna click the puke on this window and voila there we go the puke is gone now another, once again I may not have ever tried that had I not been if I had I not looked at Lewis's channel so this is all me, except for those transparent digits on my screen. Dude, I stole that straight from you. That's awesome. So we got similarity. See, with these adjustments, we can probably get rid of some of the jaggedness, like turn down, what is this, similarity zero, blend one. Like what, what does this crap do? What if we turn it like way up? Does it start looking better? It does. It starts blending the shit out of it. So what if we do similarity 100? What's that do? No, oh, it can start kind of making it peach and puke colored on, on the back. So I, I'm not sure how much I'll mess with that. Let's go ahead and leave it right there. And let's go ahead. We're going to adjust our scene just a little bit to move that down and into the bottom right-hand corner or bottom left-hand corner. Actually, probably going to wind up sticking that in the top left. Almost all of my videos use picture in picture in the bottom left or bottom right. And provided that's not Let's see, let's go to our wide camera and then we're going to add our multimeter provided that's not like obstructing anything. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see where I put that. I'm going to do some tinkering with tinkering with that off camera. But the big deal is is that now on my open broadcaster, I can actually go to add a global source and I can pick multimeter and whenever I add multimeter as a source, bang, I've got it on the screen and I've got it on the screen transparent. And it also put it, I think put it where I planned on it going, but I'll have to adjust the size just a little bit. So there we are in our top right-hand corner of the screen. We're transparent. The meter just shut off because I spent too much time talking. I will always give credit where credit is due. I'm, I'm, I, you won't catch me taking somebody else's idea and acting like it's mine. So, oh, you got to press the RS-232 button to start. So here we are. RS-232 is on. 
our meter is working just like that and it's all of a sudden magically calibrated maybe I'm in a different range so um, cool cool beans this is going to be an awesome addition to this YouTube channel I now have a working on-screen display and uh, I will admit Rossman absolutely beat me to the punch and he did it with this piece of equipment um, but what are you gonna do this is this is awesome I love this I'd plan on doing this for a long time but Arduino and building it on my own and this swelling job queue I got going on I'm never gonna find time so John Barron thanks man this is awesome you're gonna see this on the channel from now on although it is gonna be a tough breakup with my old Radio Shack meter but you know I'll, I'll get over it I'll I'll shed some tears and things will be fine and um, I'll always have that one to fall back on so guys that is going to be it for this video I really uh, I thank you all for watching I'm approaching 10,000 subs now and that's just it's got me over the top a little bit nervous because when I post videos people actually watch them now uh, so yeah anyways I hope you have successful repairs and um, I really hope you have a good day thanks for watching everybody I'll see you next time